the law of one unabridged transcription of contact between the L and L group in registered trademark and the social memory complex known as RAW. Session 30. I am RAW. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, I am going to make a statement and then let you correct it if I have made any errors. This is the statement. Creation is a single entity or unity. If only a single entity exists, then the only concept of service is service to self. If this single entity subdivides, then the concept of service of one of its parts to the other part is born. From this concept springs the equality of service to self or to others. It would seem that as the logos subdivided, parts would select each orientation. As individualized entities emerge in space-time then I would assume that they have polarity. Is this statement correct? I am raw. This statement is quite perceptive and correct until the final phrase in which we note that the polarities begin to be explored only at the point when a third density entity becomes aware of the possibility of choice between the concept or distortion of service to self or service to others. This marks the end of what you may call the unself-conscious or innocent phase of conscious awareness. Questioner, thank you. Would you define mind, body, and spirit separately? I am raw. These terms are all simplistic descriptive terms which equal a complex of energy focuses. The body, as you call it, being the material of the density which you experience at a given space time or time space. This complex of materials being available for distortions of what you would call physical manifestation. The mind is a complex which reflects the inpourings of the spirit in the outpourings of the body complex. It contains what you know as feelings, emotions, and intellectual thoughts in its more conscious complexities. Moving further down the tree of mind we see the intuition which is of the nature of a mind more in contact or in tune with a total being this complex. Moving down to the roots of mind we find the progression of consciousness which gradually turns from the personal to the racial memory, to the cosmic influxes, and thus becomes a direct contactor of that shuttle which we call the spirit complex. This spirit complex is the channel whereby the inpourings from all of the various universal, planetary, and personal inpourings may be funneled into the roots of consciousness and whereby consciousness may be funneled to the gateway of intelligent infinity through the balanced intelligent energy of body and mind. You will see by this series of definitive statements that mind, body, and spirit are inextricably intertwined and cannot continue, one without the other. Thus we refer to the mind-body-spirit complex rather than attempting to deal with them separately, for the work, shall we say, that you do during your experiences is done through the interaction of these three components, not through any one questioner, upon our physical death, as we call it, from this particular density in this particular incarnative experience, we lose this chemical body. Immediately after the loss of this chemical body do we maintain a different type of body? Is there still a mind-body-spirit complex at that point? I am raw. This is correct. The mind-body-spirit complex is quite intact. The physical body complex you now associate with the term body being but manifestation of a more dense and intelligently informed and powerful body complex. Questioner, is there any loss to the mind or spirit after this transition which we call death or any impairment of either because of the loss of this chemical body that we now have? I am raw. In your terms there is a great loss of mind complex due to the fact that much of the activity of a mental nature of which you are aware during the experience of the space-time continuum is as much of a surface illusion as is the chemical body complex. In other terms nothing whatever of importance is lost. The character or, shall we say, pure distillation of emotions and biases or distortions and wisdoms, if you will, becoming obvious for the first time, shall we say. These pure emotions and wisdoms and bias distortions being, for the most part either ignored or underestimated during physical life experience. In terms of the spiritual, this channel is then much open due to the lack of necessity for the forgetting characteristic of third density. Questioner, I would like to know how the mind-body-spirit complexes originate. How, going back as far as necessary, does the do they originate by spirit forming mind and mind forming body? Can you tell me this? I am raw. We ask you to consider that you are attempting to trace evolution. This evolution is as we have previously described, the consciousness being first, in first density, without movement, a random thing. Whether you may call this mind or body complex is a semantic problem. We call it mind-body complex recognizing always that in the simplest iota of this complex exists in its entirety the one infinite creator. This mind-body complex then in second density discovering the growing and turning towards the light, 
thus awakening what you may call the spirit complex, that which intensifies the upward spiraling towards the love and light of the infinite creator. The addition of this spirit complex, though apparent rather than real, it having existed potentially from the beginning of space-time, perfects itself by graduation into third density. When the mind-body-spirit complex becomes aware of the possibility of service to self or other self, then the mind-body-spirit complex is activated. Questioner, thank you. I don't wish to cover ground that we have covered before but it sometimes is helpful to restate these concepts for complete clarity since words are a poor tool for what we do. Just as a passing point, I was wondering, in on this planet during the second density I believe there was habitation at the same time space of bipedal entities and what we call the dinosaurs. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct. Questioner, these two types of entities seem to be incompatible, you might say, with each other. I don't know. Can you tell me the reason behind both types of entities inhabiting the same space-time? I am raw. Consider the workings of free will as applied to evolution. There are paths that the mind-body complex follows in an attempt to survive, to reproduce, and to seek in its fashion that which is unconsciously felt as the potential for growth. These two arenas or paths of development being two among many. Questioner, I see. A news program I saw a couple of weeks ago raised the question of why the dinosaurs vanished, you might say, from our planet suddenly. I know this is unimportant, but I just wondered what the reason was. I am raw. These entities could not feed their body complexes. Questioner, now, in second density the concept of bisexual reproduction first originates. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct. Questioner, can you tell me the philosophy behind this mechanism of propagation of the bodily complex? I am raw. The second density is one in which the groundwork is being laid for third density work. In this way it may be seen that the basic mechanisms of reproduction capitulate into a vast potential in third density for service to other self and to self. This being not only by the functions of energy transfer but also, by the various services performed due to the close contact of those who are, shall we say, magnetically attracted, one to the other. These entities thus having the opportunities for many types of service which would be unavailable to the independent entity. Questioner, was the basic reason, the original reason for this then to increase opportunity for experience of the one creator? Is this correct? I am raw. This is not merely correct but is the key to that which occurs in all densities. Questioner, does the process of bisexual reproduction or the philosophy of it play a part in the spiritual growth of second density entities? I am raw. In isolated instances this is so due to efficient perceptions upon the part of entities or species. For the greater part, by far, this is not the case in second density, the spiritual potentials being those of third density. Questioner, I was wondering if the male cat, Gandalf, has benefited by that mechanism in some way or by other mechanisms in increasing spiritual potential or understanding. I am raw. We examine this information and find it harmless. The second density entity, sound vibration Gandalf, is a rare sample of its species due first to previous individualization, secondly due to a great amount of investment in this particular life experience. This is the greatest catalyst in this entity's progress. It is very unusual, as we have said. However, the experiences of bisexual reproduction which were of the nature of the entity Gandalf were to a small extent of spiritual benefit due to an unusual relationship with another entity, this also what you call a cat. This entity also being of an unusually third density orientation or investment from previous life experiences. Thus the formation of what could be seen to be recognizably loved did exist in this relationship. Questioner, thank you. Can you give me a brief history of the metaphysical principles of the development of each of our planets around the sun and their function with respect to evolution of beings? I am raw. We shall give you a metaphysical description only of those planets upon which individual mind-body-spirit complexes have been, are, or shall be experienced. You may understand the other spheres to be a part of the logos. We take the one known as Venus. This planetary sphere was one of rapid evolution. It is our native Earth and the rapidity of the progress of the mind-body-spirit complexes upon its surface was due to harmonious interaction. Upon the entity known to you as Mars, as you have already discussed, this entity was stopped in mid-third density, 
thus being unable to continue in progression due to the lack of hospitable conditions upon the surface. This planet shall be undergoing healing for some of your space-time millennia. The planet which you dwell upon has a metaphysical history well known to you and you may ask about it if you wish. However, we have spoken to a great degree upon this subject. The planet known as Saturn has a great affinity for the infinite intelligence and thus it has been dwelled upon in its magnetic fields of time-space by those who wish to protect your system. The planetary entity known to you as Uranus is slowly moving through the first density and has the potential of moving through all densities. Questioner. Thank you. I was wondering if any of the other planets had a metaphysical evolution. You stated yesterday that much of this major galactic system dwells spiritually as a part of the Logos. By that do you mean that nearer the center of this major galactic system that the stars there do not have planetary systems? Is this correct? I am wrong. This is incorrect. The Logos has distributed itself throughout your galactic system. However, the time-space continua of some of your more central sun systems is much further advanced. Questioner, well then, could you generally say that as you get closer to the center of this major galactic system that there is a greater spiritual density, I'll use the term, or that this general spiritual quality is advanced at that area? I am wrong. This will be the last full question of this session as this instrument is somewhat uncomfortable. We do not wish to deplete the instrument. The spiritual density or mass of those more towards the center of your galaxy is known. However, this is due simply to the varying timelessness states during which the planetary spheres may coalesce, this process of space-time beginnings occurring earlier, shall we say, as you approach the center of the galactic spiral. We welcome any short, tape ends. Questioner, the instrument would like to know if you could tell her whether or not this item which is called Sam Miller's polarizer would help her physical well-being. Can you do that? I am wrong. As we scan the instrument we find anomalies of the magnetic field which are distorted towards our abilities to find narrow band channel into this instrument's mind-body-spirit complex. The polarizer of which you speak, as it is, would not be helpful. A careful reading of this instrument's aura by those gifted in this area, and subsequent alterations of the magnetizing forces of this polarizer, would assist the entity, Sam, in creating such a polarizer that would be of some aid to the instrument. However, we would suggest that no electrical or magnetic equipment not necessary for the recording of our words be brought into these sessions, for we wish no distortions that are not necessary. Questioner. Thank you. Is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact? This instrument is well balanced and the contact is as it should be. This instrument has certain difficulties of a distortion you would call the muscular spasm, thus making the motionless position uncomfortable. Thus we leave the instrument. I am wrong. You are doing well, my friends. I leave you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, then. Rejoicing in the power and the peace of the One Creator, Adonai, and of Session 30.